I didn't think they had the stomach to do it, but they did. Brad Stevens trades Robert Williams and Malcolm Brogdon for Drew Holiday. What? This is a very expensive team that's going for it right now. We're going to talk about it all on this Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry O.B. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day and I'm here for you every Monday through Friday with a free fresh podcast dropped directly to your device if you're a subscriber. So subscribe and I hope this show, if you're not a subscriber yet, this show will convince you that you should be because we are breaking down a deal that I didn't think was going to happen. There was one path that I thought would get uh, Drew Holiday to Boston, I thought, no way, no way would they trade Robert Williams as part of a deal plus picks. I said, no chance. And Brad Stevens said, oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, here we go. Malcolm Brogdon, uh, Robert Williams, out. Two first-round picks, out. Drew Holiday, in. Does this make this team better? We're, we're going to get to every aspect of this deal uh, here first today's show is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account use the code locked on nba for twenty dollars off your first purchase let me bring in my guy tom westerholm uh hey. tom, tom we were both you and i both pretty vocal there this was th- basically this was we don't believe luke skywalker can hit the exhaust port with <laughs> in, in the next wing we don't think you can do it and yeah. he was like I got the force, baby. Brad yeah. Stevens said, yeah. I no bull rise swamp rats all the time. I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Brad Stevens going for it. And Brad like, Stevens heard us and just did one at like the Colorado yeah. celebration. <laughs> <laughs> like... I, I'm sure he listened or someone told him about yeah. the podcast. He's like, oh, these guys are going to be completely embarrassed. Uh, yes. Look, yeah. to be clear, I was, I, I said, the trade was possible if they wanted to do this. I just didn't. I wasn't willing to trade Rob. I yeah. wasn't. Uh, and then I, I kind of bought into what Brad Stevens was saying. Hey, we had we had to re readjust our you know balance between the back court and the front court. Yeah. Well, y- y- now what's the deal with that? That that's yeah, that going away. Was- that, that's not true, clearly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I can't wait. Media day is tomorrow. I mean, people tomorrow. are going to listen to So, like, I'm going to sit. I'm going to ask Brad. I'd be like, so, what about this balancing of the backcourt, frontcourt thing that you were talking about? Uh, yeah. what, what's your What's your initial reaction? People are texting me. People are hitting me. Like, th- did the Celtics get better this summer or not? Listen, I'm going to, like, I really like... Marcus Smart, I really like Robert Williams. I think these are really good players. I really like Grant Williams. I think these guys are all excellent NBA players who played really well for the Celtics. And yeah, I don't see how you can... I I do think that the Celtics got better. And I think so much of it depends on health, right? I mean, so much of this... This is a big bet on Chris Stapps Porzingis, certainly. This is a big bet on 37-year-old Al Horford. This is a big bet on Luke Cornett. This is a big bet on Sam Hauser. This is a big bet on some of these like... Peyton Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard is your backup point guard, right? Yeah. Like, this is a big bet on a lot of unproven guys. And also, this is the best starting lineup in the NBA. And it's not that – I mean, like, I mean, I guess, like, top to bottom, it's not that close, right? Like, the Bucs have have a ton of talent. A lot of teams have a ton of talent. But to me, this is the best starting lineup in the NBA. And, I mean, that's a heck of a starting point, you know? Like, that's (laughs) – well, what what is what is the starting lineup? Because there's two. There's two possibilities here, and I don't know which one it's going to be. Is right. it Holiday, Derek White, Tatum Brown, and Porzingis, or is it Holiday or White? Uh, probably Holiday. Probably Holiday. Got to be Holiday. Right? Yeah. Holiday with Tatum Brown, 
Horford and Porzingis Horford. go too big. I, I don't know which way you go with that. And I'm I'm my guess is that you start White and Holiday together. Yep. And you pull one of those guys early to bring in Al Horford. And then you just do the little dance where Peyton Pritchard gets some minutes, Tatum gets a bunch of time as your as your basic de facto point guard. Like all that stuff that I was saying, I hate Tatum in that role. Well, this is going to be Tatum completely in that role. Yeah. My get my guess is White and Holiday start together with Porzingis back there. That and that makes Porzingis your primary rim protector, which is interesting. It's a very interesting dynamic going on. It is. I and I mean, I think with that rim protection, right? The good news is you have all this perimeter defense around him too, helping out like this. This that like some of that perimeter defense can be just disgusting, right? Like, I mean, I think like the white holiday backcourt, mm -hmm. that is tough. Think about and you know, you hear Tatum and Brown talking about making all defensive teams at at their best. Yeah. And they're not always at their best, Especially but at their best. <laughs> but completely focused, completely giving full effort. Tatum is a really good defender. Unbelievable, an all defense guy at his best. And, uh, he he can be he can he can be for sure. Absolutely. And he can block shots at the rim. He's long. He can he can deter people from driving. At his he's great, great, great at jumping into passing lanes. If the if he is allowed to do that, he can get a lot of steals. Jalen Brown at his best, not always at his best, but at his best, it, a very very good defender. Drew Absolutely. Holiday, obviously all defensive. Uh, possibilities been on that all defensive team before Derek white just made an all defensive team. So defensively on the perimeter, the Celtics have the potential to be very, very uh, good. Now Porzingis, you're, you're asking Porzingis to do a lot mm -hmm. back there, protecting the rim. You're asking mm -hmm. him to be, uh, you know, to do what Rob did. It, it's going to be really interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still processing this whole thing. Um, I mean, like you're lucky Tatum can grab rebounds and like Tatum's yes, yes. honestly, he might have to average like nine or 10. Cause like, He's, yeah, you know, that's, that's never been poor strong suit necessarily. And, um, you know, you just got rid of Rob. Like that was a big thing for Rob. Like Tatum's got a Tatum's going to have to be a double, double guy. I think let's, let's kind of like, let's kind of bake, bake this all together here. Let's, let's, let's kind of like break it all down. The Celtics essentially. In the starting lineup, took Marcus Smart and, and made him Drew Holiday. Yep. Okay, they essentially took Robert Williams and made him Kristaps Porzingis. Well, kind of what they did with with Holiday is they mushed Brogdon and Smart together, right? Like they, they just yes. like because you know both they, those guys yeah. are gone, right? Both those guys, are, yeah. If there was, if you could like smush both of those guys together and get a player. I guess Drew Holiday would be the closest. Kind of get Drew Holiday, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So that's yeah. a good one. They they smashed. They put him in the car, tra the, the the compactor, and they the, the cube that came out is Drew Holiday. Uh, and then, I guess you could say they did the same thing with the two Williamses. You take the the rim protection and the shooting, you mash them together, and then you stretch it way out, and you get Kristaps Porzingis. Yeah. Uh, so, but. But now you're taking two guys and turning them into one and two other guys and turning them into one. And you've got depth questions, which we'll, we'll talk about the depth questions in a second. The, the Celtics are very obviously, very clearly going for it. It's this year. It's title or bust this season. Um, and I've said multiple times that this is their window right now. They, they've made it like we're going for it. Uh, later on, we'll talk about the finances because the finances, I don't know how the hell they move forward after this season financially. Yeah. And that's why, that's another reason why it's damn the torpedoes. Boston's going for it right the hell now. Uh, because those four guys right now make $133 million next year. They're going to make $155 million. And mm -hmm. the there they four guys are already over the salary cap. You throw in you throw in 
uh, Al and Derek White, and you're already at the second apron. Like yeah. so, but I'll save that for the last segment. The, the the money the money doesn't matter right now. What matters is the players on the floor, and are they better? Are they a better team this year? We'll we'll continue this conversation, the depth stuff, in just a second. First, today's show is brought to you by Game Time, the Game Time app. Uh, I know that the, there are people. Uh, I was on my way. I was on my way to the Connecticut Sun game. I didn't have tickets. I was going to buy them there. Uh, very simple for me to open up the Game Time app, get the tickets. Uh, my wife could have done it in the car on the way. I'm a little lucky that I didn't buy the tickets yet because I could turn around and come home and start, you know, doing my job. But hey, someone, if you wanted, if you were in that situation, the Game Time app would be a very simple thing to open up. You don't have to worry about you know buying buying the tickets. A very simple way to buy tickets for that sporting event. Could have been a music uh, event. Could have been a comedy show, theater, whatever. Killer last minute deals. Uh, you can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to what to expect when you arrive. It's an all uh, all in prices. Show you the total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without the hidden fees. The hidden fees are so annoying. You buy the tickets in two taps they got deals on tickets right up to the start of the event uh even after an, an hour after it starts it's the place to find your last minute seats uh with zone deals you can pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of an 18 percent savings uh and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section or row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference you cannot lose take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA. You get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On NBA. Locked L O C K E D on NBA for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Uh, head on over to Lockdown Fantasy Basketball. That's going to be, if you've got a fantasy team, you want to know, hey, how does this work? How does Rob going to Portland impact my fantasy team? Josh Lloyd's got you covered. How all of these deals impact you fantasy-wise. You want to win your league? If you got money on the deal uh, on your league, he's going to help you out. So check that out. All right, let's get back into the conversation here with Tom Westerholm. Um, it's This is just... Full on Missoula ball. The, Brad Stevens took the two the two worst shooters in the starting lineup and turned them into a guy. We won't talk about his playoff uh, shooting percentages just yet, but in three years in Milwaukee during the regular season, Drew Holiday shot thirty nine and a half percent from three. Uh, he's going to have just as much space with the with the Celtics as he as he got in Milwaukee, maybe more, uh, and. The um, they turned Robert Williams, a complete non shooter, obviously not a three point guy, into Porzingis, who can pull yep. up from 26. So, this is Joe Missoula. Brad Stevens is giving Joe Missoula his dream team, he's giving Joe Missoula the mix of guys, at least in the starting lineup, one through six, because either Horford. Or one of the two guards, White or Brogdon, uh, White or um, Holiday, will come off the bench. One, we'll figure out that I guess this week. Uh, but all of these guys can shoot. You got a you got a shooter coming off the bench in one of those guys. It's it's Missoula ball. It, he wants shooting. They're, I'm going to say they they. I'm not going to say they sacrifice defense because yeah, getting Holiday no. back. They didn't sacrifice defense. They're, they're going to play a much different defensive style. It's not mm -hmm. going to be the same as with Rob and Marcus. It's a different defensive style, but they made sure to get as much shooting at all positions on the floor as possible. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think I will be really interested to watch, you know, Malcolm Brogdon, obviously his last season in Indiana had a lackluster shooting year comes to Boston. And I mean, one of the things that everybody talked about was how much more space he was going to have, how many more opportunities he was going to have shot the lights out. Right. I'm fascinated to see what happens with holiday this year. Um, you know, last year I looked it up, 40% uh, of Brogdon's shots were three pointers that could be up per NBA.com were threes that could have been classified as wide open or open, right? Those same opportunities are going to be there for holiday. And again, maybe more because Porzingis is going to space the floor even more. Like this is going to be such a three point happy team. There's going to be so much space. Like I, I think there is 
there are valid concerns with Mizzou. I mean, I know you have many of them. Um, there are, and I, I think they're very valid. Um, the concerns with with Missoula Ball, but I do think that one thing it's going to do is when you look at the way Tatum can attack the rim now, the amount of space that he's going to have, the amount of space that Jalen Brown is going to have. Uh, frankly, you know, the amount of room to operate that Drew Holiday is going to have, like. The offense has the potential to be really special. And and I think to your point, like if Missoula was trying to implement something with Missoula ball, Brad Stevens had no time to build a team for him. Mm -hmm. You know, like that was part, part, the whole part of the thing with Udoka. Although it is kind of funny. I, I will say it's kind of funny that how perfectly holiday would have fit into Ime Udoka's <laughs> yeah, sure. as well. But that might be more a factor of just holiday being a perfect fit wherever he goes. Um, <laughs> I do think that like this team, like Brad built this for Missoula. He like Missoula's vision. Brad is all in because Brad's all in on a bunch of stuff, right? Brad's all in on this team as constructed being a championship contender and like, you know, going for it this season. And he's also all in on Joe Missoula. And he's also all in on, on three point shooting 100%. on everything that Missoula is doing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a good gamble. I think if you're going to do this, right, if, if you are, if you're Brad Stevens and you're saying, okay, Joe Missoula is the coach that's going to take us, you know, to the promised land for the first time since 2008. And that is, you know, exactly what he's saying. That's exactly where we're at. Then giving him the roster that he needs to try to do that makes a lot of sense. So here we are. There, there's still depth concerns now though. You've, yes. you've moved <laughs> now. The six man of the year is gone. Grant. Yeah you know, for all of his flaws or whatever. And, and however that went with, with Joe, he's gone. I think uh, quick, quick aside with that. I would not be surprised if Grant is the guy they end up missing the most this year. Just that, that depth, that mm -hmm. ability to guard, to, 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 to defend so many different positions. I, he's the one that I'm like, man, I think, I think they're going to really wish they had him around. And I understand that would have been very difficult with all the money and everything else, but well, <laughs> the money the money is being spent somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, so it okay. Sure is. So your top six, however they however they decide to start, start big, start small. Porzingis, Tatum, Brown, uh, Horford, White, Holiday. That we know. After that, um, hmm, we've got Peyton Pritchard, uh -huh. who, capable, capable, but. Is, is, is that how you want to go into the playoffs? I don't think so. Luke Cornett, capable, but is that how you want to go into the playoffs? I don't think so. Uh, O'Shea Brissett, don't know how he's going to work. Uh, with Sam Hauser, forgot, is Sam Hauser? Very, very important season for Sam Hauser. Very important season for Sam Hauser. Him and uh, Pritchard, same boat. Him and Pritchard are going to be critical in the early going. Critical yes. in the early going. Uh, the, now the Celtics technically have 13 roster spots because uh, Lamar Stevens is on an exhibit 10, right? So he's a camp invite, but I assume that he, you know, he's he's an NBA player, um, and with this he, he'll 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 make the team. But your your depth is Pritchard, Cornette, Hauser, Brissett, Lamar Stevens, Delano Banton. Um, I'm not including Jordan Walsh. I just don't think he's ready. Um, but there might be pressure to, to, to play him. There might be a little bit more to just this kind of see maybe, yeah. he, maybe he's more ready than we think, but all of this is to say the, the Celtics need to add somebody They'll They'll have 14 players on their roster. Um, uh, Oh, Shvi Mikhailuk. He's, he's going to be around. Um, but when I was on, uh, when I wrote my, it's very unlikely this trade is going to happen on Boston Sports Journal. The one thing that I wrote was, it's the only path I see is Brogdon and Rob, or Brogdon and Al plus one, the picks and all of that, basically what happened, and then you use the traded player exception, yeah. 6.2 million, to go get a guy. Uh, I do think the Celtics need to go get a guy, because Agreed. they're... Whether whether it's at the big or as a backup point or both. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um they they need to they need to get somebody because it's it yeah. it's thin. It's thin on the bench. 
and I think real quick, I, I think it's very interesting. Like, okay, so they've they've got they had you know before this trade they had great draft equity going into the future, right? They had this extra pick next season. They had all their futures. Okay, now one of those unprotected futures is gone. Okay, now that found money that you kind of got with that Marcus Smart, you know that that, that you mm. got by trading Smart instead of Brogdon, one of those is gone. So yeah. it's like it's not panic time. But again, you're looking at that traded player exception. You got to trade a pick with that, right? Like if you're going to bring anybody in, that's got to be picks. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, it's uh, that that the depth is going to be very interesting, and that's you know that that's kind of the and look, that's what it is, right? If you trade for a player of Drew Holiday's caliber, it's going to hurt because Drew Holiday is really good, and now you got to try to mitigate that hurt as much as you can. Can I throw can I throw a quick name at you? I'm going to yeah, say please. a name. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give credit to Mike Pischel. A uh, friend of mine, big Celtics fan on Twitter, brought this up. I'm interested by it. Oklahoma City is in a, in a pinch, a real, real pinch. I do think they should get Shea Gilgis Alexander. That's a good idea. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah. you. All right. Now, I will throw out a name that fits into the traded player exception. If OKC is looking to just move a guy, pick up a pick, something, a couple of seconds, whatever it is, uh, to help the Celtics with their big man situation. I'm going to say it. I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to let you chew on it. We're going to come back. I'm going to let you re reply. Okay, ready? I think we should save it for after the break. I think you should. I don't know. You're going to do this? Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Very happy to have you on board. Media Day is Monday, so th this week's shows are going to be Media Day, Monday, uh, so the Tuesday show is going to be like all kinds of quotes. I don't even know how, if I'm going to have enough time. I'm going to have to break it up into pieces. I don't know. It's going to be a lot. I will give you everything you need to know. Uh, then practices all week. So make sure you're subscribed. I will have, I'm there. I'm going to be in the practice facility, talking to guys one-on-one, -on -one, talking to guys in the scrums. So make sure you're subscribed. Get your podcast here Monday through Friday. Okay, Tom, you ready? I'm ready. Alexei po po Pokachevsky. Mm. Tell me. Okay. Makes $5 million. Okay. So he fits into the traded player exception. OKC has got Chet Holmgren back. Mm -hmm. um, they've got, um, they've, they have too many players. They can, mm -hmm. they can play uh, a lot of guys. They can play small. Um, they can throw, uh, a combination of, you know, Giddy, they could put Giddy out there. If they want to give him a little bit of run, they can go small. They, they have opportunities here to, uh, they got, they got Jalen Williams, obviously like they, they've got guys that can fill that spot. Pokashevsky. Okay. He's young. He's, he's not, uh, he's not exactly a three point shooter, but last season he shot 36 and a half percent. Uh, he blocks a ton of shots. Um, he's, but for a depth piece, he's young, he's cheap. Uh, there's going to have to be a, a question about his contract, uh, coming up. I think he's going to be a restricted free agent soon, but regardless, it's a name that fits. It makes the Celtics very expensive. They're definitely going to go into, they're already going to be over the second apron now as we start to drift into financial talk. I don't know. They could do worse than Pokashevsky as a third big that I think he, I think he moves ahead of Luke Cornett in the, in the depth chart. Yeah. Could be, and, and, and it makes it very clear. Like these are your two guys. Pokashevsky comes in in certain situations, not a ton of pressure, lots of space for him to operate. All you got to do is protect the rim. I like the idea. I like the idea. That's not bad. I think it, it, my concern is just if, if you're looking like if you're going to trade like like, you know, draft equity, if you're going to if you're if you've got this kind of one opportunity to improve your roster to me, I, you know, I'm, I'm OK with riding Pritchard into the playoffs as the backup point guard. Mm -hmm. You know, that's I'm, I'm not I don't love it, but I'm OK with it. You know, he's he's played in the playoffs before. Right. Like he's. Oh, he's yeah. Been there no, before. for sure. For sure. Um, it's to just me, it's small. Like, yeah. To me, you know, it's just 
like you you still haven't addressed like a huge the rebounding problem. Um, you still don't kind of have that big beefy dude. Like to me, there there would be some value in okay, like it, like look down the road, right? If you if you're gonna face Nikola Jokic, uh, you got some guys who are gonna get bullied right now, sure. and that's a little concerning. Um, so I, I mean, I think you know I'm kind of looking for uh, somebody who's um, to quote like 2019 weird Celtics Twitter, somebody who's a little more like thick and jacked. Um, with your, <laughs> um, uh, with, with the, your, uh, with your traded player exception, but you could do a lot worse than, than Pokashevsky for sure. The Celtics can really mess with me and just make this the summer of Corrales is just, you know, screw you Corrales, uh, by, by trading for Andre Drummond. Oh man. Yes. That would be great. <laughs> That's a big beefy dude. I That's mean, a- I'm sorry. Like you could do worse than Andre that's, Drummond. That's on this the self proclaimed self proclaimed best rebounder in history. Uh, self proclaimed future Hall of Famer. He is. He fits your rebounding. He's a big guy who can can rebound. Um, I mean, what they could really do to just lift a middle finger at both sides of this screen right now is trade for Tristan Thompson. But oh my God! Please no! Please no! <laughs> Jesus, Tom, like we were having such a good day. It's already tough <laughs> enough. Uh, no, no Tristan Thompson. I'd rather Don't get Andre Thompson. Drummond. Don't do that. I, that I actually, that would, trade, could, that would change the summer to an F on both of yeah. our report cards. Yeah, I could I could actually listen to Andre Drummond yeah. uh, in in Boston as a third big. What is he in Ch- Chicago now? Do they? I don't know. If I don't know. They. <sighs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but in this situation, if you're looking for a rebounder, he could, he fits the bill, he fits the bill. And, he's, and he's cheaper and he's $3 yeah, million yeah, or so. Yeah. If, if, if he's available, if they can, if they want to move him, um, I don't know why Chicago not now Chicago would be like, yeah, we're just helping Boston out. Uh, <laughs> they might just be sitting here going like, gee, Dame. And now this, uh, we haven't even talked about the, the, the revenge factor of drew holiday. He, here comes Milwaukee. Milwaukee's like, yeah, tough decision, tough to give up Drew, um, you know. But you get Dame, and Boston's like, hey, hey, watch this, you know. Now, I mean, now, sick to your stomach if you're Milwaukee. Just like, come on, them. Yeah. Like, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Milwaukee's still flying high from Dame. But like, if I'm Milwaukee, I'm just like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. No. Seriously. It's like. It's like you know, it's very wrestling. It's very WWE, it, mm. you know, like all of a sudden, like the, the one stable just spurned a guy, but they yeah. add this guy and they're very, feeling really good. And now here come the bad guys. I'm going to say Boston's the bad guys and all this guy kind of like being the bad guy. Uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, it's Drew holidays music. And he comes out and he just starts kicking everybody's ass. That I think is that's, <laughs> I think there's very much uh, a motivation here. A, to like uh challenge Milwaukee because everybody was all over Milwaukee. Now you're like, oh, now you've got somebody who can actually defend Dame, has motivation uh against Milwaukee. And B, like you you keep him away from Philly, you keep him away from Miami. Like, I don't think that this was the plan all along for Brad Stevens. I, Drew Holiday was never available. So the 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 summer was like, hey, this is what we got. And then all of a sudden, Milwaukee trades for Dame and Holiday's available, and you got Dame in your conference. If if Damian Lillard went to a Western Conference team and like some other good guard was available, I don't know, but I'm just making up a scenario. I don't know if Boston would have been as eager to get in on this. Yeah. But because Dame went to Milwaukee and it becomes, oh, crap, we got to do something because even though I still like the, the, um, the matchup, they still were like, well, we have this opportunity here. We have an opportunity to throw a middle finger at Milwaukee to 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 get the the defensive guy, the guy that they gave up to go against them. That it's almost like, hey, we didn't want to trade Rob, but that plus Miami was hot in his heels, Philly was hot in his heels. You just say, hey, we 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 got to we got to do this deal uh, that we might not have normally wanted to do. Maybe they felt forced into this. Maybe, maybe like, I don't know. I, I, I'm at a point where are, are the Celtics better is the overarching question. And they, they, 
they are in some ways, but they aren't because they sacrificed so much depth this summer. Yeah. And then the money, they're over the second apron now. They're not going to get under the second apron. <laughs> they're way over the second apron next summer. So pushing this forward a little bit, there's no way you keep Holiday, Porzingis, Tatum, and Brown together long term. And and Woj is reporting that the Celtics are looking for a long term deal on on Holiday. It uh makes you think about it if makes... they were gonna. I mean, I think you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> like somebody's I, moving. And honestly, we don't have to do that on this podcast because no, we don't. The Drew Holiday is here podcast. Honestly, I mean, we haven't even, you know, we're 30 minutes in. We haven't even touched on like, hey, Robert Williams is not with the Celtics anymore. Like, that's a bummer. I like that Rob. Sucks. Like, that, that sucks. I love talking to Rob. I love yeah. talking to Rob. Like, what a, yeah. I mean, just, just, a, just a, a fascinating person, a fascinating, fascinating basketball player who just yeah. like, you look at him and you think he's just a lob threat shot blocker. And then he just laces a pass between like, yeah, four people. like, and it's like, I mean, what an interesting dude, interesting player. Um, tough to see him go, man. Like him and smart in one summer. That's, you know, Brad's Brad better be right. Cause he really tested a lot of Celtics fans this summer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they really went for it. Um, they really, they just, the bottom line here is whether you think they're better or worse, I do think it's up for some debate. They're mm -hmm. different. They're different. They're very they're different. They're yep. Very different. That's the thing. They are, I think, I think they're much better offensively. I think they're much they they're a much better shooting team yes. than they were before. Which is um, tantamount to saying the same thing in 2023. They are better offensively right. because they are a better three-point shooting team. Right. Yeah. Um defensively, they're they're maybe just as good, right? Like it's different. It's not going to be Porzingis as the Romer with Al Horford defend. Like, I don't think that's going to be, I think it's going to be Al Horford coming off the bench. Um, so you can keep shooting at the five, the entire game. I think yep. that's probably the best way to do it. Forget about just preserving Al Horford. You keep, you keep a, a shooting big on the floor at all times. And then you can add whomever to be depth. Or if you're like getting crushed on the boards, you bring in your Andre Drummond or uh, whatever. Um, they are it, they are not as deep, and that's going to be where I think we're going to have to figure out how much better they are. I think overall, I'm going to say they're better because their their the shooting is better. And she's another element to this whole thing is man. It's like you you. The move towards shoot, they were able to move towards more shooting while keeping the defense potentially like at that same level. Um, but it's it is so much about shooting 2023 NBA. It's it's you just need as much shooting as possible. I got to get that through my thick, bald head. It you just need as much shooting as you possibly can get. And the bottom line is Boston has shooting at all five spots, and they didn't have that last year. And, and when you think about what cost them against Miami, yes, defensively, they should have been able to stop Gabe Vincent and they should have been able to stop Caleb Martin, but they also couldn't hit a damn shot. And if they were just able to hit some shots, they could have gotten to the NBA finals and who knows what happens in the NBA finals. Um, and now, yeah. now your point guard is, well, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what he does in the playoffs with Boston. Your yeah. center, your center <laughs> is a guy that's theoretically going to hit shots. Um, so I don't know. Ultimately, I think Boston is a little bit better by virtue of adding to the offense. Um, but God, I I am it it sucks. I don't like losing Rob. I don't like losing Rob. And I think I yeah. think that the Celtics had the potential to be the number one defensive team in the league with Rob there, even without Drew Holiday. They might still be. I don't know. They might still be, but it, it really, it really sucks to lose Rob. It's, it was not a deal that I was willing to do, but if it's explained to me, like, Hey, we had to do it because of Dame, because of the other teams in the East, it was either do this or willingly try to fight through four roadblocks on our way to the title. And we didn't want to do that. 
then so then so be it. Then then this year is the all in year. You better win the damn title this year, and then next you you figure it out tomorrow tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. I agree with I agree with that. Okay. Well, initial reaction podcast is done. We'll <laughs> we'll see what happens at media day. We probably so, won't uh, ever talk about Drew Holiday again, right? Like this is probably the uh, last probably the last time. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Uh, appreciate you, man. And thanks to you. Uh, it, it's a lot to process. Um, I, whatever you think, you let me know what you think in the comments. I, I, I think the Celtics, like I said, a little bit better in some regards, some question marks in others, super expensive. Somebody is going to have to move next summer, I think. Maybe you get one more season out of this group, but holy crap, is it a super, super expensive group over the second apron? All of those things that Boston seem to be avoiding, they're just like, hey, yeah, you know what? Forget it. Change of plans. So we're so much of this is going to keep going forward in in these podcasts all week long because we're going to be hearing from Missoula, we're going to be hearing from Brad, we're going to be hearing from the players. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see the reaction. So stick with us right here on the Lockdown Celtics podcast to get all of that every day this week. Podcast after every game, so you're not getting five podcasts a week. Uh, some weeks you're getting six, some weeks you're getting maybe seven. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure that if you're in every day or if you're with me every Monday through Friday, that you share the podcast, spread the word, tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.